This is how to get the best gear in Minecraft without ever using a village. To begin, we need stone tools and iron. We don't need that much iron, but at least enough to make a flint and steel, a bucket, and an iron pickaxe. Next, we need three things, leather, sugarcane, and food. The fastest way is just to kill the naturally generating cows, horses, donkeys, and mules, and pick up as much sugarcane as possible. Plains biomes are the best for this, and we'll stand them until we have around 90 leather and around a stack of sugarcane. With a good plains biome, getting that should only take around 30 minutes, but that is all the leather we'll ever need throughout the run. We will need 6 stacks and 48 sugarcane in total, so in that case, it will require some farming. Throughout the time we're getting those things, a Minecraft day will probably pass, and night is a time to get a few key resources gunpowder, and ender pearls. For this process, we will need at least one pearl and 10 gunpowder, so at night or in the caves, we have to farm those. With our mining trip, there are six main things to do. It's a lot, especially the two stacks of iron, but since our sugarcane needs to grow, it works. We want to mine in 20 minute intervals and then return to replant our sugarcane so we're being as efficient as possible. In 1.18, the fastest way to get the required material materials is 100% going to be caving. And to help when finding caves, use your sea counter. This literally tells you how many air blocks you are looking at, so if you ever see it spike to around 200 or so, there is most certainly a cave in that direction. Once we have 5 diamonds, we can use 3 of those to make a diamond pickaxe, which we can then use to get the obsidian, and now we have the required materials to enchant our pickaxe with unbreaking 1, and I'll explain why we're doing that a little bit later on. Now we want to finish farming sugarcane until we have a little bit more than enough to craft 90 books. If we're not at this point yet, this is the perfect time to start getting wood. For our build, we're going to need 4 stacks of logs, so we can do that while we're getting the rest of the sugarcane. We'll be moving from this location so break the plant of sugarcane to add to the final total if needed. At this point, hopefully our inventory should look something like this. We can craft all the leather into books using 4 stacks and 14 of our sugarcane, and then we just need to craft the 2 pieces of TNT. We're going to take all those items from our old camp and go to the nether, and if you're playing on a warp type server, this is your chance to escape from spawn. Take 10 pieces of obsidian from the exit portal and head to a nether wastes biome. There we're going to set up a temporary camp to store our entire inventory except for the basics since we're going to need a lot of inventory space for the 29 stacks of magma blocks. And this is exactly why we needed that unbreaking one pickaxe. It's a lot, but it's necessary for the farm. The easiest place to find magma blocks is at the nether sea level, and they're found in pretty large bunches, so collecting this should take around 30 minutes. The final part is to transport all those items you just collected, including your previous ones, to a point just below the nether roof. There, we're going to find a bedrock piece at y equals 127. Make sure to bring the obsidian, a flint and steel, the two pistons, the TNT, a lever, and a trap door. Then, pearl above the bedrock and break that piece of bedrock. Make sure to write it down. There are a lot of bedrock breaking tutorials online, but I've found that this method is the easiest one. Say we want to break this piece of bedrock right here, the first thing we have to do is go into our controls, our keybinds, and change our click into a key press, and I'm going to use this accent thing right here. Next thing is to place an upwards facing piston right there, an obsidian, our two TNT, and a block right there. We're going to put a lever on the side of it, and our trapdoor right there. Now we want to hold our piston, we're going to go underneath using the trapdoor, flip that on, and then hold our key press right there. And then if we've done everything correctly, this should be a broken piece of bedrock. And there we have it.
to start the farm, aggro one of the pigmen, and get back into the center. The rest will aggro onto you, and the minecrest will kill them for XP. First thing to do with the XP is to get a fortune 3 pickaxe, and if the diamond pickaxe from earlier is very low durability, just enchant an iron one, or if you picked up any extra damage from earlier, enchant a new pickaxe with fortune 3. Now we need to return to the overworld and gather the remaining diamonds for armor and our tools. We also want some extra iron for anvils and hoppers, and I would recommend two extra anvils to be safe in case one breaks, and three hoppers to collect drops for the farm. Any extra lapis also collects because this will require a lot of enchanting. Once we have our items, enchanting is pretty simple. Get as many enchantments as possible as a base enchantment for each item. For armor, try to get at least two enchantments as a base. For tools, three is ideal, but two is okay as well. For the sword, make sure you get at least sharpness four as a base enchantment. The rest of the enchantments are applied with books. Make sure to get level 30 enchantments of sharpness three and efficiency three because level four enchantments of those types are pretty rare on books. Once everything has been enchanted, it should look like this. There are two enchantments we can't get from this, however, Mending and Soul Speed 3, but we are set up to get those very easily. Mending is a villager trade, and this is a no village run, so to get super cheap mending and not have to use a village, we're going to cure a zombie villager. Before we do anything though, from the farm, grab the gold that's been dropped and take those two extra pickaxes and enchant them with at least efficiency 3 and unbreaking 3. This is going to be for netherite mining, which we'll be doing along the way. To cure our villager, we need splash potions of weakness, which means we need a fortress. Make sure to mark the coordinates of the hole in the nether roof before heading out. Once the blaze rods are collected, the trip back to the gold farm is the perfect time to mine for ancient debris. Dig down below the fortress and mine at Y equals 15 along a chunk border. I think most people know this, but beds are not a good way to get ancient debris anymore. What we're gonna do is just mine along chunk borders at y equals 15 in the direction of your hole in the nether roof. To max all the tools and all the armor, it'll take 36 debris, but it's only 24 armor and a sword if that's the preferred path. After all of the debris is gathered, pop up back to a point underneath the hole, and since it's a nether waste biome, there should be piglins which can be traded with for soul speed. Finally, in the nether, grab a brown mushroom, the leftover sugarcane, and the remaining books. At the end of this all, we should have these items. Back in the overworld, these are the remaining materials we need to gather. First thing to do though is to farm the sugarcane. This will be used to trade to the mending villager for emeralds in the future. Now brew up the potion, make the golden apple, and craft a lectern. And then at this point, it's just lucking out on a zombie villager. Zombie villagers have a 5% chance of spawning in place of a regular zombie, so make sure you're getting as many mob spawns as possible while staying close to the sugar cane. If this means going underground during daytime, do it. Always make sure to carry the splash potion and the golden apple if you do. Once we have a cured villager, cycle trades until we have a one emerald mending trade, and then make sure to lock it as soon as possible. To get the emeralds, we need 2 stacks and 16 paper, so far more sugarcane if needed. Then all to be done is to trade for the mending books. 9 mending books super easily. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. Smelt the debris into netherite and apply it onto the gear with the soul speed and mending. And that is completely maxed gear without ever using a village. I hope this strategy is useful, so let me know in the comments if it works for you.